So nice to see some familiar faces. Good morning. Yeah, so I'm Makunda for those of you that don't know me. Um, I've been teaching with Integral Yoga since 2009 and Swami Divyananda was my teacher for my basic training. So I'm excited we're doing this challenge and um, welcome to day two. One of the key things that I really appreciate about the practice is we're looking for this balance between effort and ease. And so I want you to really listen to your body. And it's much more about discovering the practice that's already within you versus trying to impose something that might feel foreign or not useful. And it's a, it, it's a dance, right? Because some of this, we do want to figure out where's the effort? Where are we putting forward some um, energy into the practice that helps to create some transformation? And where are we also remembering to um, honor ourselves and right where we are? So we'll get to have a nice one hour practice together. And through this, I want you to, um, again, listen to yourself. We're going to look at a few things with some options. Today, I want to look at lunges in particular as we play with those in sun salutations. But other than that, uh, if some of you are also brand new to the uh, Zoom practice, um, we are going to have a couple different camera angles if that's possible for your space so I can see you well. Um, I can see everyone pretty well at the moment, so that helps. And when we stand up, I'll change my angle and we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. For the ohms, um, we will keep it on mute because it just sort of doesn't work with the delay, but uh, we'll still feel the vibration. So let's go ahead and close the eyes. Let yourself sit up nice and tall. Begin to welcome yourself to your practice and connect with the breath. As you inhale, feel that support, the uplifted body lengthening the torso, but not being stiff. Keep that, and as you exhale, feel the body ground, soften through the face, relax the shoulders. The inhale, feel that light and bright energy coming from within. The exhale, that rooting down, centering energy, bringing you right here in this moment. From this place, let's chant Om together three times. Inhale. Om. 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 Let's chant the Hari Om and we'll do it. Um, it'll be responsive, but of course, because we're muted, um, you'll be just chanting with the, um, actually I'll chant with you. So I'll do a line and I'll put my hand on my chest when I'm chanting, and then I'll offer my hand to you when you can do the chanting. And if it's new to you, if this is new to you, just do your best. If you uh, need to be a little more quiet in your home space, you can just hum. Mm -hmm. So have fun. Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari 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 Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari 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 Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Hari Om, 
Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari 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 Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Om Hari 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 Om Hari Om Hari Om Hari Hari Om Hari Om Hari Om Hari Hari Om Hari Hari Om Hari 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 Om. Take a deep inhale through the nose and a deep exhale. Good. Interlace all the fingers together. We'll do a little wrist warm up. You're going to make a figure eight as best you can, just circling. You can go nice and slow like this to get started. And then when you feel you've got the pathway, it's going to go a little more quickly. You can make it a little bigger. And then the fun time is reversing it. Whoa. See if you can get the brain to wake up and see what happens there. Good. <laughs> and now we're gonna switch by pressing the palms forward, stretching out a little bit, just the right amount. Let your shoulders press down. Good. And then stretch the arms up, reaching back, maybe look up. And look forward, fan the arms down to the side. Let's reach behind and interlace. And then squeeze the shoulder blades behind you, maybe open the shoulders, lift through the heart center and bow the chin forward, stretching, closing off the throat in this way, lifting the chest, Good, and release and bring the hands back in front of you. All right, awesome. Let's bring the legs in front. So move off of your cushions. If you have that underneath you, set it off to the side and we'll bring our feet in front of us. And I want you to bend your knees and bring your hands behind the knees. We're doing a little abdominal activation here. Tilting back. So this is sort of like we're going into upward boat pose. So it might be you just stay here Otherwise, try lifting the right arm by the ear and return. Bring that back to the leg and left arm. Breathing steadily and return. Now, if you're doing okay, float the heels an inch off the mat. Focus on the abdomen working. Try not to clench up in the hips. And right arm, lift up. And exhale lower. Inhale left and exhale lower. You can lift the feet to knee height if you're still doing okay. And right arm, inhale, lift. Exhale lower, left arm, lift. Exhale lower. Good, if you're doing okay still, reach the hands, upward boat. Flexion in the ankles, knees close together, lift through the heart center. Excellent, lower the heels down, reach the arms up, sit up tall and lean forward and stretch gently forward with the knees bent, relax the neck, head, let the body hang heavy on the legs. Easy stretch for the back. All right, rolling up. Let's swing your feet around and come into tabletop position. Just a couple of cat cows here. So before we go in though, you want your wrist right below the shoulders and you wanna spread your fingers wide apart. If your wrists bother you, you can do knuckles. You can also bring your hands a couple inches forward. So the wrists are a little ahead of the shoulders. So begin by taking the uh, inhale, lowering the belly, lifting the tail, looking forward. And the exhale, press on the palms, lift the abdomen and tuck chin and pelvis. 
and do that on your own, connecting breath and movement. The inhale is the letting the belly relax down, head up, and the exhale is the lifting the belly and looking under. Very good. It's a nice warming up for the back muscles. And then on your next exhale, just come back to a neutral tabletop. With the toes tucked under, I want you to keep your knees bent and we'll shift into our downward dog this way. Focus on keeping the back nice and long. As you shift back, you can see your feet are about hip width apart. Now see how this feels for the body. You can always choose tabletop instead of a downward dog. So if that ever feels like you need to take a break, now slowly straighten the right knee a little bit, push that heel towards the mat and alternate. Good, just warming up the legs some more. Shift forward into a plank, make the adjustment so that your wrists once again are pretty much below the shoulders. You can always have the knees touching down if you rather not do plank with the knees lifted, knees can be down. And downward dog, shifting back. Let's step the right foot forward, it may be two steps. So it might step part of the way forward, then you use the right hand and you bring it up with the hands and then touch the left knee down. So we'll be talking about lunge today, but this is just a preliminary warm up to start to feel that stretch there. You wanna feel that your hips are forward and down as best you can. You're lifting the head, neck and chest. That looks good. Let's step the left foot forward. So lift the knee, step the left foot forward, Uttanasana. Relax the neck muscles, head is heavy, arms are heavy, and the knees stay bent. So we're focused here more on the fold at the hips, relaxing the upper body, a little more weight towards the toes. This looks great. Now send the right foot back. Send your right foot back for your lunge. Pause here. So again, you feel the hips forward and down, head, neck, and chest lifting. Notice the flow of breath, it looks good. All right, let's go ahead and lift that right knee, step forward, Uttanasana. Again, hanging the body heavy over the legs. You might even feel the abdomen getting a light compression on the thighs. Let's come up halfway, hands are on the shins right below the knees. So we're not pushing on the knees, we're pressing on the bony shins, lengthening the torso. That micro bend of the knees helps keep our back nice and flat. Bring your hands to the hip crease. So this is where we're folding from. You feel the crease here. And then as you rise up, push on the feet, sit standing up tall, swing the arms by the ears, take an arch in the upper back. And then hands in prayer position and release the arms into dasana. So this might be a moment where if you need to, you can adjust your camera angle if it might be helpful for me to see you better, a little lifting, there's that fine balance of not too high, not too low. <laughs> and also if you happen to have two blocks or if you have a couple of big books, bring those over on either side of the mat. I've been doing this with Zoom and a lot of people that don't have blocks have been using like their big dictionary books or whatever they might have, but it looks like Pretty much most of you got, uh, you have your block. So this is great. All right, so sun salutations. We'll do a slow first round. These will progressively um, pick up a little bit in our tempo. Into Dasana, look down, your toes are pointing forward. Palms are facing forward if that's comfortable. Notice that the shoulders are finding that just right spot. So you feel broadness in the front body and the back body. Take a moment to ground. Inhale, palms connect, exhale, reach the arms forward, up, take a small arch just behind the shoulder blades and then fold, hinge from that point at the hips, 
reach all the way forward and relax the body over the legs. Place the hands outside the feet, an important moment here to set up well. Hands outside the feet and step the left foot far back. Now let's scoop the blocks up. Bring the blocks in so they're on your mat and you have your blo uh, blocks right below the shoulders. They could be in the flat position, medium or tall position. So we've got these three levels with the blocks. And feel how you're lifting the head, neck and chest. You're letting, yeah, your left knee can touch down. That looks good. If ever you feel like you need padding for the knee, you could always uh, bring a blanket over and have that at the knee area. And I'm just lightly pressing down on the block so I can feel a lift of the heart center. I'm looking down also, so I check real quick that my ankle is pretty much below my knee, so I'm not causing any knee strain. Looks really good on everyone. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move the blocks off to the side so I can lift the left knee and step back to downward dog. Again, remember you always have the option if we're in downward dog too long for you, come into tabletop. You look back, the feet are hip width apart. You're pressing through the fingers and the palms. So that helps not put so much pressure on the heel of the hand, which could cause problem for the wrists. All right, shift forward, lower your knees down. Keep your hips lightly raised. Lower your chest between the hands, chin forward. Lower your hips, glide through low cobra. We're lifting just the upper back, little to no pressure on the hands. Feel your elbows hugging the ribs. Now, if this feels like it might cause any issues for your wrist, you can always put your forearms down now and push back with the forearms to get back to the hands and downward dog. So there's an option there. I understand uh, there is a little concern about that. So that could be an option that might help. All right, from here, let's step that left foot forward. Again, could go to the middle of the mat, use the left hand and bring your blocks back into the picture. And notice if the blocks are too far back or if they're too far forward, it does change everything. So you wanna find where's that just right spot for my hands to be pressing down so I can feel that lift of my heart center. Feel that stretch for the hips. Nice. Okay, move the blocks aside and lift the right knee, step forward, Uttanasana. Relax the neck muscles. Let's take that halfway up position again, Ardha Uttanasana, hands on the shins to feel the length of the torso. Now let yourself fold all the way forward again, Uttanasana. And let's airplane the arms out to the sides to stand up, reach out and lift and stretch up arms by the ears for our arch and hands in prayer. Good, right into round two, arms forward, up, small arch. Exhale as you fold from the hips all the way forward. You choose if you want the blocks. Step the right foot all the way back, look forward. Pause here for a moment to find that length. Good, and lift the right knee, downward dog. Let's lower the knees down. Another option for your wrists to protect them, you could go right to forearm already and then lower down chest and chin, glide right, in, right into low cobra by sliding the knuckles back down on the mat, elbows up. I could bring my forearms back down again to push back to tabletop, then downward dog. Right foot, step it halfway forward and then all the way forward or as you need to, find the length in the torso. Lifting that left knee, step forward, Uttanasana. Again, inhale halfway up, Uttanasana. Register the length. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, reach and lift all the way. And good, hands in prayer. Let's come back to Tadasana for a couple of breaths. Just notice how that all is feeling for you if you're taking care of yourself. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you're doing okay. 
All right, I got even two thumbs up. Thank you. Um, come back to Dasana. Okay, one more round of sun salutations. Here we go. Inhale. Palms together, exhale. Reach the arms forward, up, small arch. From the hips, reach out long with the body. Place the hands outside the feet. Left foot steps far back, look forward. Downward dog, lifting the knee, step all the way back. Good, shift forward to the knees. Again, you choose either forearms down or lower chest and chin to glide through low cobra. Good, and then either use your forearms or hands to push all the way back, either tabletop or right to downward dog. Good, bring the left foot forward. Feel that lift. And follow with the right foot, Uttanasana. Same thing, let's take our inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Our exhale, Uttanasana. And our inhale, one sweeping motion, come all the way up. And the exhale, hands in prayer. Release the arms to Dasana. We'll take a very simple balance here. Feet are hip width apart. Toes are forward. And bring your arms in front of you. They're gonna reach up, palms stay facing down. And then lift the heels just an inch off the floor. Try not to grip the toes. And then lower heels and arms at the same time. So you can do that again, or we'll go a little further into this. Lift the arms. Lift the heels maybe a little higher and see if you might reach the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Have your eyes focusing on a point, lengthening. And all together, arms and heels lower slowly, slowly, slowly. One more time. And reach the arms, lift the heels just as much as you're comfortable, stretching up to the ceiling. Keep your eyes focused, the breath flowing. And slowly lower all the way down, arms and heels touch to Dasana. Nice. Making our way to the mat for Shavasana. We'll do this with the half of our sun salutation flow. Bring your palms together. Reach your arms forward up, take that small arch. Exhale, fold the body in half. Step one knee, then the other to tabletop, and then shift around onto your back for Shavasana. This is our resting pose, lying on your backs. If you can, your palms are facing up if that's comfortable, toes flopping out to the sides. We'll take a moment here early on in the practice to remind ourselves to be paying attention to this mind, body, breath. To feel the energy that's now moving freely through the body after our warm ups. And to recognize the flow between effort and ease. Take 
a deep inhale through the nose and a deep exhale. Shift onto your abdomen. So you might bend one knee or both knees and find your best way to roll to a side. As soon as you're on your abdomen, bring your hands under the shoulders for our low cobra. Now, if the hand position in that way is not so comfortable, you can always do knuckles down, hands into gentle fists. Slide the hands back enough so your elbows point up to the ceiling, your ankles are close together. Point the toes so the shoelace part of the feet start pressing down gently, the hips press down and lift the head, neck and chest. Low cobra. Make sure you're not straining the neck. So feel that the back of the neck is long. You're working the upper back muscles and you're not pressing all of your weight into your hands or knuckles. Just that feeling of the back working, heart center lifting. Option here, reach the arms alongside the body, palms facing into the thighs. You can stay there or also float the legs into Porvanavasana, balancing on the hips and abdomen. Please come down as soon as you feel you need to, otherwise another couple of breaths. Take an inhale and let's all come out. Exhale, release the body down, arms alongside, or they can even stack like a pillow if that might be more comfortable for the forehead or cheek. One more asana for our, our back muscles to get this stretch. You're welcome to come back to Porvanavasana, the last pose we were in, or bend the knees for bow pose, Dhanurasana. Reach back, find the feet. Do your best to keep your knees about hip width apart. Start pressing the feet to the hands and feel as though the thighs can start to lift off first to get weight towards the abdomen and then lift the upper body. Continue to press through the feet to lift the feet upwards as much as you're okay to do. Feel free to come out as soon as you need to, otherwise a few more breaths. This gives a great stretch for the whole back while we're also giving a compression to the abdomen, giving it a nice massage to improve digestion. And if you're still in the pose, take an inhale, maybe lift a bit higher and the exhale gently helps you release out. Gently release the feet and advasana. Center the forehead, place the hands under the shoulders Shift yourself to tabletop position, or you can always use your knuckles to come up. From here, we're gonna stretch out the back with another downward dog. So press through the palms. Now you can either keep your knees bent as we did in the beginning, or feel how much you might be able to press the backs of the knees and still maintain length in the low back. Press the fingers and palms, stretch for the shoulders, letting the back return to its natural position with length. Now from here, walk your hands back to the feet, Uttanasana. So your feet are about hip width apart, your knees stay bent. Relax the neck muscles and feel the weight is more forward on the toes versus sinking back in the heels. Make sure the neck is relaxing. Even the shoulders can relax here. Option to hold on to opposite elbows, see how that feels. Adds a little bit of extra weight. Aware of how much you're folding right from the hips. You can be in child's pose also, um, Balaram, if that's more comfortable. All right, let's all walk back to tabletop. So walk your hands forward and you're in tabletop. From tabletop, we're gonna bring our legs in front of us for our forward fold on the mat. So you can bring a hip down and then bring your feet in front of you. And let's all, um, if you have a blanket or cushion, that's gonna be good to have for this whole 21 days. We're gonna use this in a lot of different ways. So 
a blanket is a great prop and I'm going to use that. Actually, I'm going to use my, I have a white blanket because it's hard to see on my mat, <laughs> my other one. So I'm going to use this one. And what I like to do is not to sit on top of it. It's not so I have a cushion for my bum. It's actually a prop to help me shift my pelvis slightly forward. So you see how I'm on the edge of it, right? It's not there for a nice padding. It's there for to try to tip my pelvis slightly forward. Lifting my toes, so I wanna keep energy in the legs. I might though have a little bend in the knees. So if I feel like I have really tight hamstrings, that might be helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and demo with that. Place the hands outside the hips for Dandasana. Either the palms might press down, you might need to get the knuckles to press down. So you're sitting up nice and tall. Looks good, everyone. Feel that even lift of the heart center. Keep the lift of the torso, sweep the arms by the ears. Now, here's where it's important about that pelvic tilt. Feel that you're folding from that place, reaching forward very slowly as much as you can. The two sits bones are pointing down to the floor as the fingertips reach out. Good, and then when the back rounds, lower the arms, hands, lower the head. This almost feels like our standing forward fold. So you wanna feel as though that you can give in to this. There's no need to let the head stay lifted. You feel that you can let the head hang heavy. And if you need to bend your knees a little more, more like we did in the very beginning of our warm up, you're welcome to do that. And focus the energy inward. To come out, start to lift the head. As soon as you can lengthen the body, reach the arms by the ears. Come back up to that nice tall upper body and fan the arms down to the sides. Very good. All right, so we're, we're gonna roll onto our backs for our shoulder stand practice. I'm gonna, before we do that though, have a blanket here to demo what we can do as a support for the shoulder stand. I'm also going to give an option in case you're not going to practice shoulder stand today. There are some uh, contraindications, uncontrolled high blood pressure, high auto hernia, glaucoma, uh, heavy days of your moon cycle, or if you've had recent injury surgeries to your head, neck, or shoulders, you'd want to avoid going into the full shoulder stand. Your option would be to use a prop, and actually I'll demo that really quickly. The prop could be a cushion or the blanket. I would roll and just lift my hips and place that underneath by, by my sacrum, float my legs so that, so that it's supporting enough that I'm not clenching in my hips. And then I might also add my arms. Now I'm trying to get the plumb line so it's dropping down ankle to hip, wrist to shoulder. That's the most uh, easeful way to be able to hold this. So that's one option, the most gentle. For the blanket, Ideally, you're folding it so you have about an inch of a fold, and you want to have that um, about a foot away from the top of the mat. And I like the rolled part to be at the top versus the open part. So the open part's at the lower, lower uh, direction of the mat. So let me just show this for those of you that are new to this. I'll rest down, and I have the blanket right at about an, there's about an inch of the blanket above my shoulder here. So what I'm creating is a little area of space and lift from my neck. My palms will be down and I'll lift the legs. Get a little momentum, might swing a couple times and then lift up so my legs become parallel. Hands go to the low back. I like to squeeze my elbows a little closer and then support my low back with my hips over my shoulders. If I'm feeling okay, I'll lift both legs and then come out the same way. All right, 
So if you feel like you want to do shoulder stand, I'll guide you into that. If you're going to practice the modified with the prop, feel free to go ahead and set that up and be in that for shoulder stand. Palms down. This looks pretty good, everyone. I see. So make sure that, yeah, you got an inch above the shoulder of blanket still. So your head's not on the blanket. Your head is on the mat. Looks good. Okay, from here, swing the legs up and maybe get a little momentum until you can catch the low back. That's right. Squeeze your elbows a little closer if you can. Feel like your hands are spatulas on the low back on either side of the spine. You could try one leg up if it feels a little scary for both to go up and then reach the legs. So you gotta yeah, keep your hips over your shoulders. That looks good. I'll be timing this now. We'll have about one and a half minutes. So I'll give the cue after about 45 seconds here so you can time yourself. At any point, if you feel you need to come out, please come out sooner. Focus at the base of the throat. This is the area we're creating a compression around the thyroid and parathyroid glands. You can visualize a pebble dropping in a pond of water and what's happening, that compression ripples out hormones through the body to bring benefit. This is our halfway point. For those that are doing okay, try walking your hands closer to the shoulder blades to help lift the hips a little higher above the shoulders. As much as you can feel the balance of this, it actually starts to take less pressure off the hands. If you're still in shoulder stand, begin to reach the legs overhead. Counterbalance with the hips, you're being careful. And then extend the arms, palms down. Using abdominal muscles, keep your legs close to the body as you roll down one vertebra at a time. It's a little more challenging when you have the blanket there. So there might be a little speed bump, but just do your best as you roll through. As soon as you feel your low back pressing down, keep that connection and lower the legs, one or both, as you activate abdominal muscles. As soon as you land, breathe, and maybe turn the head side to side to help relax the neck. All right, very good. The next pose will be Matsyasana, and I'd like to also give a brief demo of Matsyasana, especially for those that are relatively new. This will entail bringing our cushion back into the picture or your blanket. So I'll show, um, with my blanket actually, cause it's a little easier to see. So I go for a little bit longer of a fold here, almost like the length of my own torso. And then I'll roll it. So I've got a nice long roll and I'll put this in the center of the mat. And from here, I'll make, I'll have my, keep my hips down on the mat, extend my legs out. And then I roll along. So I've got a little extra support and I do want my head to reach off. So it's tipping this way. What I wanna work on is eventually getting the elbows to press down. But if that's not comfortable for my elbows, then I have the prop here. If I can press on the elbows, eventually I hold myself up. Okay, so take a moment, use your blanket as I did. So you're folding this long. Those of you that are in the pose, I'll give you some guidance for another 30 seconds. But the rest of us, let's go ahead and do your best there. Again, it's to open the neck in the opposite direction of the shoulder stand where we were closing off the throat. Now we're opening the throat. For those of you that are in, have been in Matsyasana, you're welcome to come out or 
Stay in and breathe, expand through the lungs. So Alicia, that looks great. Good, Andrea, that looks great. Andrea, Andrea, I'll have to ask you. <laughs> yeah, Sue, yeah, nice everyone. Again, if you're, if you're still in the pose, I'm still just a couple people I wanna keep an eye on, but if you, you're welcome to come out and, and bring yourself into a resting pose. So Jennifer, yes, as long as your hips are grounding, your, yeah, your, your hips are on the, on the ground, good. Does that feel good? You feel the throat open? Yeah, nice. All right, so for time's sake, I am gonna have us all come out if you're still in. So go ahead and you can reverse the way you came in, lifting up with the head. For those with the prop, you'll need to roll to the side to move that off of the mat. And then let's all return on our backs. We'll do our twists from our reclining position, Jatada Parivartanasana. So on your backs, hug your knees in, making a little ball shape. Good, and then open the arms out like a T. If you feel like you wanna shift the hips over to the right, you can lower feet and then shift the hips to the right, lift the knees and feet again and turn knees to the left as you look to the right. So in that way you're twisting the spine, knees going to the left, head looking to the right. We've got that nice opposition. Do your best to relax the right arm, the right shoulder. Good, I see moving happening, that's nice, <laughs> good. Let's all bring our knees up through center and knees over to the other side, adjusting your hips, knees to the right, look to the left. Yeah, it's nice to do some dynamic movement with that like you, some of you were doing or to pause and rest the whole time on one side. So much of our practice is to focus on keeping our spines nice and healthy, working through all the joints along the vertebra, the vertebral column. Good, bring the knees back through center and place the feet down. This morning we'll do our gentle yoga mudra. Let's butterfly the knees open, soles of the feet to touch. But you can also do seated. I see Jyotisa go for it. Left hand on the abdomen, right hand on the heart center. Let the eyes close and visualize that you're sealing in all the benefits of this morning's practice. Release the arms alongside of the body, bring the knees together. If you'd like to set up in any different way, you can roll to the side to get up, to get your blanket or socks. Otherwise, extend the legs out long on the mat, preparing for Shavasana. Since you're in your homes, you could also turn out your lights, you could get an eye pillow, all kinds of nice things to prepare for this quiet practice of going inward. For those of you that are ready, you're welcome to practice uh, tensing and releasing all at once, Sigra Savasana. You can squeeze the glute muscles, squeeze the legs, flex the ankles, squeeze the hands to fists, the arms, shoulder blades behind you, squeeze the face, squeeze everything and release everything. 
you feel you need one more, squeeze the glutes, point the toes, splay the fingers like starfish, inflate the abdomen like a balloon, expand, expand, stick out the tongue, lion's breath. Ah! And release. <laughs> Good. Any other final movements and then commit to stillness. Scan through the body, observe, notice if there are areas that need special attention. Send the breath there, encourage those parts of the body to release. On every level, we feel the body relaxing and letting go from the skin softening around the entire body, the muscles releasing any tension, even tendons and ligaments become more supple. The organs feel relaxed. The blood flow starts to move at a slower pace as the heart begins to work a little less. And the bones begin to rest heavier down onto the mat towards the earth. The entire body is able to relax and surrender to the ground. Observe the flow of breath, following the inhale into the exhale as it returns to the inhale. Be the witness of your own breath. Notice any thoughts that are present. Make space for these thoughts to pass, to move. Witness your thoughts. In this way, we avoid being pulled into the drama or story and build this experience as the observer, the witness. Allow the mind to move past this field of thought into a clearing, an open space, an outer space, a cosmic region of universal consciousness and peace. This peace resides within you as your true nature. Be with this peace. Om Shanti, Shanti.
bring awareness to the breath. And bring awareness to this physical body, moving the fingers, the toes, arms, legs, awakening here. You're welcome to stretch the arms overhead if you'd like. Arms reach, legs reach out. Relax the arms, bend the knees, place the feet down, and roll to your right side. Use your arm as a pillow. Pause there for a breath or two. Gently using the hands, walk yourself up. Let the head hang heavy as it'll be the last to come up. Find your props, however you wanna set up here so that you're comfortable for our practice from here, which brings in pranayama, our breathing practices. These very beautiful and powerful practices for healing and to continue moving the energy that we've been working with. Do your best to sit up nice and tall. As it is with all the other parts of the practice, we wanna avoid strain and find that balance of effort and ease. Dirga Swasam are breathing to understand how we work with the abdomen, the rib cage, chest, and even all the way up to the collarbones. Let's bring the left hand on the abdomen, right hand on the heart center. Just notice how you naturally breathe. On your next inhale, expand the abdomen out, pressing it out so that you feel the movement into the left hand. Expand the chest into the right hand and even feel the lift of the collarbones. As you exhale, soften the collarbones first, then feel that the chest is softening, rib cage softening, and then actively press abdomen back towards the spine. Inhale, expand the abdomen, then the chest, all the way up to the collarbones. Good, and then exhale slowly. Again, the abdomen finishes by pressing as much air out as you can. You can do that a few more times. Feel free to let the hands go. If you feel you understand that movement, the hands can be on the thighs or knees. Continue that very slow movement. With the eyes closed, focusing on how you're able to bring control to the breath in this way. This can be a beautiful practice in and of itself any time in the day. If you start to feel anxious or stress, even if you're not sure, what should I do next? I'm gonna pause and take a couple of minutes of slow, deep breathing. We're bringing in as much as seven times more oxygen, so more fuel and energy for the body. We're also helping to press out toxins. From the lungs. And the next time you exhale, we'll let that go and return to regular breathing. We'll do one round of Kapalabhati. So you probably learned a little bit about this yesterday. So we'll just touch on it briefly. You may wanna bring a hand back onto the abdomen because this will be a, a rapid abdominal breathing, a snapping motion. So remember that it's the snapping back of the abdomen as we exhale through the nose. So it looks like this. So make sure you feel that pressing back as the air breathes out through the nose. The inhale is passive. So just one round followed by that slow Dirgashwasam breathing. And then that'll lead us right into the meditation. So I'll give a little guidance. Here we go. Exhale. Take a partial inhale and begin. Keep going. Now you may go a little more slowly, a little more quickly, just depends on your experience with this. It's roughly one per second, but you wanna find a nice steady rhythm. Again, it's through the nose. Try your best, so not through the mouth if you can. There you go. <laughs> 
good, Jennifer. And then continue that feeling, your face stays relaxed. Good, take a final exhale. And that Dirga Shwasam inhale, belly, rib cage, chest, collarbones, lift, expand. And as you exhale, bring the hand to the knee and slowly press the air out. This will lead us right into regular breathing for our meditation. Focus the mind simply on the breath, the inhale and the exhale, or any other single point of focus. And remain steady. Call the mind back as you need to. Closing shlokas, we're sending out chants for peace. The hands can come into prayer position if you'd like. Asatoma satkamaya, tamasoma jyotir kamaya, mrityor ma amritam gamaya, om shanti shanti shanti. Lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to the light. Lead us from the fear of death to the knowledge of immortality. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. And may the light of truth overcome all darkness. Victory to that light. Jai Shri Satguru Maharaj Ki Jai. Bowing forward, honoring your practice, honoring this time and Zoom space together. Namaste. Thank you all very much. Oh.